Side heads are sometimes used in documents to display headings more prominently. The first paragraph related to the heading is aligned with the side head. While a table can be used to format this design, I prefer a different method. I've opened a sample document using side heads. I use the basic default template in LibreOffice Writer with some modifications. I'll explain the modifications. With the cursor on this page, I'll go to the Page Styles section in the Styles deck of the sidebar. The side head's page style is highlighted. I could have altered the default page style, but I wanted a separate page style for side heads. I'll show you how to create a custom page style later. I'll right click on the side heads page style and select modify to show you the simple changes I made. I'll go to the page tab. I set the left margin to 2.50 inches. I set the right margin to 1.00 inches. These are the only necessary changes to the page style. However, before I close this dialog, I'll go to the Borders tab. I'll select all four borders and choose a color of red. I'll click Apply. You can now see the actual page text area. I'll change this back to No Borders and click OK. I'll go to the Paragraph Styles area in the sidebar. I'll right-click on Heading 4 and select Modify. I chose this style for my side heads. I'll go to the Indents and Spacing tab. Since the side head will not be in the paragraph text area of the document, I set both above paragraph and below paragraph to 0, 0.00 inches so these settings wouldn't cause any problems when I tried to align the side head vertically with the paragraph. I'll go to the Alignment tab. I set the alignment to right so that the right edge of the headings would be aligned vertically. I'll go to the Font tab. I wanted the side head to be a little larger than the 12 point body text, so I set size to 14 points. I'll go to the Font Effects tab. I set the font color to a custom color of 1B75BC. I talk about setting up custom colors in other videos. Those are the only changes I made to the Heading 4 paragraph style. I'll click Cancel. I decided to use a frame so I could position the side head outside of the paragraph text area. I didn't want to set the attributes for each frame, so I created a custom frame style. I'll go to the Frame Styles area of the sidebar. I'll right-click on the side head frame style and select Modify to show you the settings I made. I'll go to the Type tab. I set the width to 1.45 inches. This will allow a 0.05 inch space between the side head and the paragraph. I set the height to Auto Size so the height of the frame would adjust to the text inside. I set the anchor to paragraph so the side head will move with the paragraph if more text is later added above the paragraph. In the position area, I set the horizontal position from left by 1.00 inches to entire page. Even though the frame style is anchored to the paragraph, it can be positioned in relationship to the page. This setting will position the frame so there is an inch between the left side of the frame and the left edge of the paper. This is the same space as from the right side of the paragraph text area to the right edge of the page. I set the vertical position from top by negative 0.05 inches to the paragraph text area. I wanted the bottom of the side head text aligned with the bottom of the body text, so I had to raise the frame in relation to the paragraph. 
This setting will vary depending on the font and font size you are using. Those were the only settings I made, but it is easier to set up the side heads if you can see the frame, so I'll go to the Borders tab. I'll set all four borders and make sure padding is set to 0.00 inches on all four sides. I'll click OK. I'll create a side head beside the last paragraph to show you how easy this is once you've set up the styles you will be using. I'll place the cursor anywhere in the paragraph. I'll go to insert frame, frame interactively. I'll draw a frame over the paragraph. The size doesn't matter. I'll go to the frame styles area in the sidebar. I'll double click on the side head frame style. The frame is automatically sized and moved to the correct position. Now I need to enter the text. First I'll click off the frame. Then I'll click within the frame. The cursor appears at the left of the frame. I'll go to the Paragraph Styles area in the sidebar. The Frame Contents Paragraph Style is automatically selected. I didn't want to change the settings of this Paragraph Style, and I want my side heads to appear in the Table of Contents, so I'll double click on the heading for Paragraph Style. This automatically increases the height of the frame and places the cursor at the right. I'll type Step 3. I'm through setting up my side heads, so I'll go to the frame styles area of the sidebar. I'll right click on side head and select modify. I'll go to the borders tab. I'll select no borders and click OK. The side heads appear without the frame borders. Now I want to set up a table of contents on the page before this. I'll place the cursor in front of the first side head to show you why you don't want to do this. I'll go to insert page break. The side head moved down a line rather than creating a new page. This certainly isn't what I wanted. I'll click on do. Now I'll place the cursor in front of the first line of the body text. I'll go to insert page break. This moves everything down a page. The headings move with the paragraphs they are linked to. I'll hit Control plus Home to go to the start of the document. I'll go to insert table of contents and index, table of contents, index, or bibliography. The heading styles are linked by default to the Table of Contents, Index, or Bibliography dialog, so I'll just click OK. That's a start, but I want to make several changes. First, I'll place my cursor in the title of the Table of Contents. The Contents heading paragraph style is highlighted in the sidebar. I'll right-click on this and select Modify. I'll go to the Alignment tab. I'll select Center and click Apply. I want the title to be a little larger, so I'll go to the Font tab. I'll change the font size to 18 points and click Apply. I'll leave it at that and click OK. Since the heading for listings are the only headings I'm using, I don't want them to be indented. I'll place the cursor in Step 1 in the Table of Contents. Contents 4 is highlighted in the sidebar. I'll right-click on this and select Modify. I'll go to the Indents and Spacing tab. I'll change Before Text to 0.00 inches and click Apply. The text of the heading for listings are moved to the left margin of the Table of Contents. It is important to realize that the Before Text setting in the Paragraph Style Heading 4 dialog refers to the text in the document itself. The Before Text setting in the Paragraph Style Contents 4 dialog refers to the text in the Table of Contents. 
I'll click OK. The page numbers were moved to the left as well, so I'll need to fix that. I'll right-click in the Table of Contents and select Edit Index. I'll go to the Entries tab. I'll uncheck Tab Position Relative to Paragraph Cell Indent. I'll click OK. That fixes the page numbers. Now I need to deal with the fact that the whole Table of Contents is not centered on the page horizontally. I'll go to the Page Styles area in the sidebar. Side Heads is highlighted. That's the page style with the larger left margin. I'll set up a new page style for the Table of Contents. I'll right-click on the sidebar and select New. I'll name this style TOC. I'll go to the Page tab. I don't want the table of contents to be so wide, so I'll set both left and right margins to 2 inches. I'll click OK. I'll double click on the TOC page style to change the page style of this page. That looks good. I'll scroll down in my document. Now my other page is messed up. It now has the TOC page style applied as well. To fix this, I'll place the cursor before the first line of the text, not the side head. I'll hit Backspace. That deletes the page break. Now I'll go to Insert, More Breaks, Manual Break. I'll select Page Break. For Page Style, I'll select Side Heads. I'll click OK. Both pages are now styled as I want them. I'll go to Print Preview to show you how this will print. This took a little time to set up. To really understand how this was done, watch this video again pausing often. At the same time, set up similar styles in a document in your own version of LibreOffice Writer. To save time in the future, save the styles in a custom template. If you don't know how to set up a custom template or want more information about other things I talked about in this video, check out my other videos on YouTube or in my video courses. You can find links to these by clicking on More in the gray area beneath this video. Learning to do things right takes less time than trying to do things on your own and struggling with the problems you will encounter.